Hi, I'm George McClure and this is Listen Up TV. Today we have the pleasure of talking with Paul Barton, founder and chief engineer of PSB Speakers. Paul, thanks once again for speaking with us today. I enjoy these things. They uh, help to inform people and ex actually keep me on my toes. <laughs> okay, that's great. Well, we'll try to keep you on your toes. Um, today we're going to talk about the new PSB Alpha PS1 computer speaker, which is a real godsend in my opinion, just because so many people do their listening through computers and hard drive based music systems, and this is just a fantastic computer speaker. Can you tell us a little bit about the development of this product? Well, uh, it sort of fits in, in the pedigree of the PSB uh, philosophy of sound reproduction, and that is that uh, speakers need to have flat frequency response, good low distortion, good dispersion. And that doesn't change when we even make a small computer speaker. We're starting with a, a basic platform of a three and a half inch woofer and a three quarter inch tweeter in, in very traditional ways, except that we've aligned it with a dedicated amplifier and the amplifier is in one of the speakers and then the other speaker is a slave which is connected to it. And um, because, as you said, uh, Many people put all their music on computers, that's really where the source is. And having a good sound reproduction system on computers, many people do listen to a lot of their music when they're on computers, so uh, it's a market that's available uh, or out there and, and certainly PSB wants to participate in that. And the PS1 is a, our first uh, foray into uh, an all active powered loudspeaker. It has a 20 watt per channel amplifier built into it. It has a lot of nice features, like a, certainly a gain control. Uh, it has two RCA ins for left and right channel, and it also has a, a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch stereo jack input. So you can use, you know, just plug in your smartphone, or uh, you can plug in your stereo, uh, your uh, computer directly uh, into the RCA jacks. It also has a USB powered connector on the back, which will allow you to. Um, um, and very shortly we're bringing out a Bluetooth receiver which will make it a wireless oh, product great. so that you could use it as a portable device. It in fact comes in a, in a box with a little handle carrying case so it could even be not just for computers but it could be a portable music system that you could take to the park or you could take to you know, many different places. Uh, it's not battery powered but you, you would at least be able to move it around quite easily and interface with it with your music on your smartphone. And I think this way of listening, uh, I think more and more people listen to music now than ever before in, in history. And it's because they carry their music with them. And because of memory uh, and the quality of recordings that you can store on a phone or uh, on, a, on a portable device, the memories are getting so large that not only can you put lots of music on, you can put lots of music on with very high quality. So that the demands for good sound reproduction coming from digital media with higher resolutions, high, uh, high definition uh, bit rates of recordings uh, allows you to experience it, but you need to have something to play it back on, not just your hi-fi system, but right on your computer. Sure. And I think that the PS1 fills that need. Now, uh, as, as this is your first computer speaker, I assume you had to do uh, some special engineering for near field listening as opposed to your uh, other speakers. Did, uh, did you do that? Any work with the National Research Council well, on that? Or? Because you're so close to the to the speaker, it's important that I know what the relationship between the tweeter and the woofer is because as you move further and further away, uh, acoustically they become closer and closer together. So that as you move, as you're th this close to the loudspeaker, fairly close, you'll find that it's more critical what the angle of the speaker. So we also uh, offer for the near field or a bit further field, for the near field we offer a base that you can remove the current base and put another base on which actually can tilt it back mm. a little bit. So that, that is just a minor adjustment and it doesn't mean you couldn't just put something under the front of them without a base, mm -hmm. but that's something that the listener can adjust themselves. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about the amplification again, he says 20 watts uh, 20 per watt, channel. 20 watt per channel amplifier. Um, it's a digital uh, uh, amplifier so it's quite efficient, it's about 90% efficient doesn't require a lot of heat sinks, is quite compact, quite small, and quite robust when you consider how, how small a package it's, it's, it's in. So uh, another uh, interesting feature is the, um, 
ability for it to, uh, well, keep up with the, 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 the regular type of loudspeaker. You know, we, we early on when I was developing this product, uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to get the attention of a bunch of magazines who came to Ottawa and I, I subjected them to a double blind screen listening test. At that time, I was actually developing the PS1 mm -hmm. uh, at the National Research Council. So I decided, without them knowing, to throw that development into the test, and uh, it kept uh, it kept up very well with towered loudspeakers. Uh, but I added, a, I cheated a little bit, and I added a subwoofer too. <laughs> so it it made it sound bigger than it really was. Uh, and just to add to that, uh, in the in the near future, we're just in production right now, uh, and this is uh, June of 2013. We, we will uh, be uh, shortly introducing a matching subwoofer for the PS1, which is in a, uh, like about a six inch cube. Right. So it's a very tiny little sub. Uh, the PS1 has a subwoofer output so that you can connect a subwoofer to the PS1s and uh, we're, we're adding this subwoofer to our line and it'll be coming out. And then soon. you'll be able to control the volume of the subwoofer as well from right. the volume control on the PS1? Yeah, it's linked to the volume control of the PS1. Mm -hmm. So whenever you change it, the sub level will also change. And then the subwoofer has its own volume control. It has its own frequency adjustment and it also has a phase switch. And we also have indications on the back of the subwoofer that tell you what the default setting for the PS1 should be when you first set it up. And then you can adjust from there. Well, that's great. Uh, Paul, thank you so much once again for talking with us today. Uh, again, it's our always, always our pleasure to talk with Paul Barton of PSB Speakers. I'm George McClure, and this is Listen Up TV.